It's just another terrific Tuesday. Oh yeah, Tuesday. It's Tuesday, baby. I'm back. Episode number 36 of the Homesteads and Homeschools podcast. My guest today is Mr. Brent DeRitter. He is a homeschooling dad. He's got a, got a little a couple stories to tell us. He um and and some future plans of his that are uh jaw-droppingly astounding. Um at least for a a land-dwelling uh I don't know, earth monkey like myself, I guess. I don't, I don't know what the term is, but uh you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, today's show, episode number 36, uh, homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash 036 for the show notes. The last few episodes, uh, you know, I, I play some music. I like music. Can't you tell by my, my intro? Um, and so I link to that, that music. If you ever are curious about, uh, who that little snippet is or, or whatever, um, you can, you can go find it in the show notes. Last week, last Thursday, I put out an episode, um, about a, a homestead update homeschool update. Um, and I forgot to give you the show notes there. So that's homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash GVQ01. Um, and you can find all the show notes uh, going forward. Every last Thursday of the month, there should be a new new episode of, uh, of updates. You spend that much time around your children and there will be stories to tell about the, uh, the homeschooling. And, and when you're constantly trying to do things outside and, and do a little bit of farming here and there or whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's stories there. So check in last Thursday of the month for, for those updates. Uh, like I said, my guest today is Brent Ritter, and uh, he's got some stories to tell. Let's go plant those Liberty seeds. Mr. Brent Ritter. All right. So my guest today is uh, Brent DeRitter. He is uh, the vice chair for the Libertarian Party in North Carolina. He's a, a homeschooling father and uh, a boat captain of sorts. We will get into that later. Um, so yeah, Brent, thanks for, for coming on. Thanks for taking the time out. I, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Man. So uh, going back to to your childhood, did you, where, where did you go to school? Were you a public school kid or what, that, what was that like? Yeah, I went to uh, Topsail in Hampstead here. Uh, shout out to Topsail. I, I loved public school when I was a kid, um, but I didn't get what I needed from it. Okay. W- w- did you go on to college? Uh, I went to college twice and uh didn't stay much longer the second time than i did the first time i realized it wasn't for me and i learn a lot faster and better when it's uh on my own when i'm self-taught yeah was that um was that when you figured out that uh high school or public school didn't didn't give you what you need or how, how did you figure that out no i thought that it was my fault um that i didn't get what i need until i had kids actually, um, <laughs> until recently, uh, we just started homeschooling about three years ago. And that was when they, they called me in to tell me that my kid was reading too far ahead of her grade level. Uh, is when I realized that we had a problem. All right. Yeah. That's, uh, so h- how old are your, I guess, how old is your oldest one then? Uh, Emily's 15. Okay. So she's, you pulled her out when she was like 12 ish. Well, She'll be 15, uh, sorry, in a, in a month or so. Um, yeah, we pulled her out when she was about 12. All right. All right. And what was the, the public school experience like up to, up to that point? Were you guys happy with it or were you kind of, you know? Uh, my oldest is a little, um, a little awkward. She's a little different. So public school was, was tough, uh, but we thought it was just tough for her. And the 12-year-old next in line, um, was doing really well. She had a lot of friends. She did really good in school. She enjoyed it. Uh, and then the, uh, the youngest that actually went to public school, uh, my nine year old was, um, you know, she was being held back a lot and by teachers that didn't want her to advance as quickly as she could. Yeah. So it was, it was a mixed bag. I mean, it wasn't great. It wasn't awful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that's, I think that's kind of normal. You know, I mean, 
not everybody's going to hate public school. Not everybody's going to love public school and, you know, it'll work for some, but it won't work for, for everyone. So, um, so then I guess what was that, that decision making process like? Cause you know, it's, it's one thing to, to see, to see your child being held back. Um, you know, and you, you, I don't know. So did you think of other options before you decided to, to pull them out and homeschool them or how, how did that come around? Uh, I dabbled in the idea, my wife and I, of homeschooling. Um, and when we were thinking about it, it was her that was going to be the full-time teacher, uh, mm-hmm. which I think was a much better plan. But, <laughs> but uh, that's not how it worked out. But we were, <clears throat> we were in the – it was that meeting where my youngest – we had had some issues with the older ones. Uh, there was some bullying going on on the school bus, and one didn't want to defend herself, and the other one definitely did, and maybe a little mm-hmm. was overzealous with it. <laughs> yep. And yep. Uh, but that's what happens in public school: is it, it's much like the prison system, and it, it, there are cliques, there are little gangs, and we live out in the country. It should be pretty mellow. I, like I said, I liked school when I was in school, um, but you know we'd had some issues, and there were some political ideas that we really didn't appreciate being pushed on our kids. But we talked about it when we got home, and. We dealt with all of it right up until uh, we were rushed into a meeting um, one afternoon with the youngest, her, uh, the second youngest with her teacher. Um, and that was in, I want to say second grade. Uh, it, it's all a blur now. But uh, <laughs> we, the, the teacher told us that there was a serious problem. When we went in, we took time off of work and um, found out that the serious problem we needed to talk about was that my daughter was reading two or three grade levels ahead of where she should be. And that it was really upsetting to the other kids that couldn't read ahead and that they had asked her repeatedly to stop checking out books in the library that were so far ahead of her grade level. And she wouldn't. And then that's a problem because she was being defiant and continually checking out books that she found interesting. And I asked if there was a problem with her reading it. And they said, no, she's well within her reading ability. In fact, she could be checking out books from the middle school, but it would hurt the other kids' feelings, so we want you to stop. And also, she should stop writing at home because that could one day make her hate writing, even though she writes at home because she loves it so much. And that was the conversation. And then I explained to the teacher that that's the opposite of her job. And we left immediately. In a, I mean, in a fury, we left. Uh, uh, we immediately went and you know, on, we live in North Carolina. We live in North Carolina. We're really lucky. So all we had to do was go home, write a letter of intent, submit it, and then immediately take our kids out of school. Wow. That's, that's insane. That's like, good grief. I don't even know what to like. That just, it, that floors me. Um, and yeah, I, can was, be, I can believe it. You know, it's not like far, far fetched, but that's just, that's nuts. Um, but uh, yeah. So you guys, you, pulled them out like then and there, huh? Did you pull all of them out at the same time or? We did. We pulled everybody out and, and saw, did an assessment with everybody and kind of figured out where they were, gave them some time off um, and, and kind of unschooled a little while and then assessed everybody and saw where they were and, and went from there and it's working great. <laughs> we yeah. love it. That's good. How, how did the kids um, handle that, that change? Uh, everybody has handled it really, really well. Um, the oldest didn't have a lot of friends to give up. Mm -hmm. Like I said, she was, she was a sweet kid and it took advantage of that. (laughs) It's a harsh, it's a harsh environment. And, uh, you know, the other three were really happy to be able to, they, they were, I have smart kids and they're ravenous for knowledge and they were so excited about being able to choose what they learn and, and, you know, what they really dive into. And if we, they were excited that if we found something they were, they were really not good at and they really weren't interested in, we could just kind of avoid it and, and not focus on things that are, you know, not productive. I I think that's one of those things. uh, I mean, you, you can take any given kid and if you find what they, what they need to know, what they want to know, what they're curious about, like they will pour themselves into it at that age. They will just, they'll, they'll just delve into things that you never thought they could, or they had that capability and it just presents itself so much. And so for a, a school to, to tell somebody they're, they're reading too far ahead and you're going to hurt other people's feelings. That's just, I'm, I'm still stuck on that. 
<laughs> it, was oh, the, man. it was the most shocking conversation I have ever had with an adult. And I'd seen this stuff on TV and it, you know, and we, we joke about it in political circles, but like I had never seen anything like it. And this woman just looked me in the eye and said, she just, she could not wrap her mind around the idea that my child should not be held back so that someone else could catch up. That the goal should be to help those kids run a little faster, not slow the faster kids down. Do do you have any, was there any sort of like gifted program at that school? I am. Imagine there wouldn't be. Uh, well, so there was when, when I was in school um, and, you know, it was, it was great. And it was locally, it, everything was very local back then. When I was in school, everything was, every decision was made on a county level or most decisions were made on a county level. And it, there was the, there was no, no child left behind. And, you know, kids were <laughs> free to move at their own pace, but <laughs> It's yeah. different now and we, they're not free. And I, I'm not sure if there was a gifted program or not, but I, you know, my kids were more likely to be labeled learning disabled because their work, I mean, you know, the, yeah. other than the, other than the 12 year old, their work level uh, was, was pretty bad because they were bored because they were, you know, in a, in, in an environment that was just way too structured and way too much pressure. It's, it's tough when you, when you get bored, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are or, or, or where you are, if you get bored, I mean, it's, it's a challenge to stay focused, you know, but once you pulled them out and you said you took a little time off and then you kind of assessed them and, and started going, how long was that sort of unschooling, de-schooling process? How long did that last? It was probably about a year. It was, it was probably a good solid year. It wouldn't have lasted so long had they not been so enthralled in everything they were doing. But I mean, the 12 year old was learning to turn wrenches and the, the oldest was, I can't get, you still can't get her to stop writing. I mean, she just won't stop writing everywhere we go. She's got a pen and paper on her. And you know, the, the youngest was taking a, a culinary class and it was just, they were having a blast. So it took us a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you guys use now? Do you uh, use a curriculum? Do you still kind of unschool with a little bit of structure or what does, what does that look like? Uh, we have some structure and we're, we're starting to implement more structure now that we've found where people, where their, you know, their strengths and their interests lie. We we're kind of setting a little more structure and making sure that they learn the basics where they really have to, and they're able to focus on what they really want to, but we use time for learning. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's, uh, it's web-based, it's pretty inexpensive and it's, it, it's a self uh, it, we get to pattern it ourselves. We get to decide what they're taking and what they're not and, and what they're working on. Um, and then mostly educational videos and discussions and kind of sporadic assignments uh, that, you know, focus more on society and, and history and things like that. So are you guys all, do you all use the same curriculum or do you kind of, is it, are you thinking about using different stuff as they get older or how does, how does that work? Cause I know for us, we have, we're using one thing now and my son's almost in middle school and, and we may, we may start using the Tom Woods curriculum as they get a little bit older, but I'm not sure yet. So. Uh, okay. So uh, when you, you, the Tom Woods, you, you're talking about Ron Paul, the, Oh yeah. That's what I meant. I meant the, <laughs> the Ron Paul curriculum. Yeah. 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 I, and I think Tom, Tom Woods actually runs that. Yeah. So we yeah. were looking at, uh, for sure the Tom Woods, I mean, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the, the Ron Paul <laughs> curriculum for the oldest. Um, and as they go into, uh, high school, probably that's what we'll be using. We, we started it and I wasn't a fan of it for the younger kids. Uh, sorry, Mr. Woods. He's going to get mad at me. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of it for the smaller kids. I think something more engaging and interactive for them is better. And we really like time for learning and then doing our science outside and, and getting actually, you know, involved in it. But uh, for the, the older kids, especially the oldest, who is very much a little entrepreneur, uh, that, that's a great curriculum and taught by geniuses just literal geniuses <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh it's definitely one of the things that i you know it's it's in the back of my mind I'm, I'm waiting until we can really use it and utilize all of it for for all of its value you know but um 
Right. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a it's a pricey program, but it's it seems very worth it. From what I've what I've heard, it uh, it's worth it. So we'll see. But um, so what what was uh, what was the hardest part for you? I think making that that switch because you know for a lot of people, I think when when you think about homeschooling, it's you're at least thinking about it for the summer. Right. I mean, you know, rarely do you pull kids out in the middle of the year or, you know, I mean, some people do, but it's, you know, usually you're you're thinking about it and you're not forced into it or you're not like, like you had to make that decision. You know, I mean, like that doesn't usually happen. So what what do you think was tough? I I don't, gosh, I don't want to like, I don't want to sound, uh, like a, like a lunatic here. There wasn't much hard about it, really. My kids are, they're easy to get along with. I was really excited to have them around more often. I'm one of those goobers that really likes to spend time with his family. (laughs) So I was super amped about hanging out with the kids more and they were amped about hanging out with us. And we just kind of, it just fell right into place. I mean, it's really, it's easy. Now the oldest is we've had some issues with uh her wanting to do things other than her work that's probably the hardest thing is the 15 the 14 year old desperately wants to do anything other than what i want her to do (laughs) uh so just having to spend more time with a teenager that's the hard part man (laughs) (laughs) seriously though like be that ability to spend more time with your kids like there's such value in that and you don't i don't think people realize it until, until they've embraced homeschooling, until they've, they've tried it out and they see like, I'm all these hours that my kid was off somewhere else being watched over and taken care of by who knows. Um, I'm doing that now. I'm building that relationship with, with my child. Um, and it's, I don't know, I, I, for me, I think that's, yeah, you're raising the, your kids again. Yeah. Yeah. You, you really are. Um, you know, and you, you know, it doesn't, your, your school day doesn't last as long as, as the other, as, as, you know, your institutionalized school days. And so you have all that time that, you know, whether you're working on a project and uh, I'm guessing you might've shown your daughter how to turn a wrench or two, or, you know, they're out in the garden oh, yeah. pulling weeds or whatever it is. They're, they're learning things that are, are, are valuable life skills, you know, that, and, and you're bonding over that. So. Yeah, it's been insane the amount that they've been able to learn. And it's awesome you get to really teach your kids again and you're <clears throat> you're you're raising your kids again. You're not sending them off to strangers to be raised and taught morality and 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 yeah, the stuff that they get to well, dude, the the fifteen year old or the fourteen, I keep calling her fifteen because she keeps telling me she's almost fifteen. <laughs> uh, the, the fourteen year old, she just she's she's involved really a, a lot politically and she's learned a lot of skills that are gonna be valuable to her through the rest of her life and we always thought she was a big introvert and it turns out she's an excellent salesperson. I was in sales for a long time and I use that in, in political outreach and she's just watching her do it. I was like, wow, she's, she's really good at this. So yeah, learning new things about your kids and, and seeing the things that they can accomplish that you weren't sure they could. It's fun, man. There's, I have no complaints about homeschooling. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, you think about that because if she was still in, a public school, you know, being, being treated as an introvert, um, by everyone, you, you never would have seen that side of her and who knows how that would have developed if it would have developed, you know? Um, right. Uh, so what, what do you do? All right, so I, I guess you, it sounds like you're the, the homeschooling father of this, this crew. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I am the principal. <laughs> okay. So, so what do you, what were you doing before you, or homeschooling them, or what are you doing now? Uh, I've done a lot of stuff. I've, I was a commercial fisherman, and um, I was a salesman for quite a while, and uh, I kind of dropped both of those and, and started working in politics, volunteering in politics. Uh, I guess work is when you get paid. I volunteer <laughs> heavily in politics, <laughs> and um, my kids do too. We got, you know, they're involved in everything that I'm involved in. They go to all the meetings and, and all that stuff, the meetups and do outreach with me. And my wife works full time and I'm about to uh, launch a political consulting business uh, in the next couple of years. And it's part of our big boat tour. Uh, that's, that's the purpose of that. Um, 
and uh the, actually the, the oldest has gotten really involved in that and really likes it and she's kind of hoping that it takes off because she wants to come and work for me one day so yeah i was, I was gonna say that sounds like uh could could very well be a a nice little family business to have um, right uh, yeah so so uh and, and yeah so this this boat thing i guess what is this this boat tour you you speak of <laughs> <laughs> uh well my life is essentially a lot of me throwing noodles at the wall and then you know seeing what sticks and mostly the wife and kids tell me i'm an idiot and we don't do most of my ideas but one day i mentioned uh well we were going to we were going to run a <clears throat> a food service off of a uh houseboat a small houseboat and we had a very small houseboat and we thought um with my father and me and my dad were talking one day and he thought it'd be really cool if you know we lived aboard or or we could sleep aboard and i was like well instead of buying a house we could live aboard and it turned into that and the wife and kids immediately were like that's a great idea and then I was like, well, that one's stuck. Let's see if we can make another one do it. And I thought, hey, we'll, uh, we'll do a tour of the, the Great Loop, which is up, uh, you would go up the Mississippi. So we would leave North Carolina. We would go down to Florida on the Intercoastal Waterway. We would cut across Florida or go all the way around it, um, probably cutting across Okeechobee, and then go up the Gulf uh, into the Mississippi. Well, we would go to New Orleans and then mississippi and then up the mississippi into the great lakes and from the great lakes across new york and then from across new york uh back down the intercoastal waterway to north carolina that is the great loop um and we're going to do that on our houseboat we're actually also in the process of uh looking for a school bus to turn into a tiny house so that we can do the same tour um a similar tour on the west coast Nice. And that, Finland. That, but yeah, sounds... so we'll be bouncing around and, and promoting the family business, doing, again, a lot of volunteer work and speeches and activism and stuff like that. That's that's pretty cool. That's uh, impressive. How long will that Great Loop uh, take, you think? So a lot of people take uh, between a year and two years. We are not sure. We're going to get started in about two years and we're kind of, we're willing to wing it. And if we get it knocked out in a year and a half, that's cool. And if we're bouncing around between that and the bus for the next five or six years as we do the loop. I'm pretty okay with that too. Good deal. Is that, is that something you, I mean, is that something you wanted to do as like a kid? Was that like an idea that you've had in your brain, like being a, a professional fisherman, a commercial fisherman? You, you, I mean, how does, how does one come into houseboat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've lived on the water my whole life, and the first I ever heard of a great of the Great Loop was like, I don't know, a few months ago. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was right. yeah, not a thing that I knew about. As soon as I saw it, the I, I I had the idea. I was like, you know, we homeschool, and I want my kids to see all the culture, and you know, they'll see so much of the country and so much culture, and and learn so much about history. And I just thought it was you know a great idea, and uh, you know. Lived on boats yeah. and worked on boats most of my life, and or uh, people are going to yell at me that I know for that. I've played on boats most of my life <laughs> and um, <laughs> done some work, <clears throat> and uh, we just we thought it'd be a cool idea. We we're not really white picket fence types, so we like to bounce around and kind of gypsy play the gypsy a little. Yeah. It's um, it's really curious when you think about that. Um, what you said, seeing, seeing the different cultures. Right. Um, and, and we always, I think most people, you think like the United States and you just think this one culture, but it's so different everywhere you go. You know, um, and I, I, I grew up in like upstate New York. So, you know, that kind of new Englandy culture and then down here into Georgia and it's amazing. In homeschool, you, you allow your kids to see that and to actually taste these different things and, and recognize that, like there's other ways to think, you know, like we think this way, but some other people think other ways. And I don't know, I just, I, I love that. I really, really appreciate that. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so, excited about them getting exposed to, to so many different ways of life and, and opinions and I'm excited about it. Sounds like they're on board too, I guess. Huh? You didn't have to twist any, any oh, children's yeah. arms. And, and no, was the, the oldest had the biggest problem with it. It's because they have to like stoop down to get into their bedroom. <laughs> so it's it, on the boat they uh they can't stand straight up in their bedroom that's the biggest complaint but there's plenty of space to spread out and and 
mess around and so yep it was it just one of them did not immediately jump on board and i think it was a 10 minute conversation with her and she was like all right yeah this is a great idea <laughs> good yeah so where you, what kind of speeches are you going to be to be giving uh, I'm a libertarian and, uh, I talk about libertarian philosophy a lot. And what I like to, when I started with the libertarian party, um, after years in the liberty movement and recognizing it in the liberty movement, I thought that I would apply my skill set to, uh, libertarianism and, and libertarian outreach because libertarians have a tendency to do libertarian outreach, which is where we, you know, go to an event and we put a table out with materials on it. And then we hide behind the table in a corner and don't talk to anybody. And we just stand around chatting about AR 15s. Um, <clears throat> but what, what, uh, what we should be doing is engaging the public and talking about their interests and their concerns. And that's what I, I work to uh, teach libertarians how to sell the idea of individual liberty and how to make radical libertarian ideas more palatable for the, for the average person. Cause I believe that the average person is a, is a liberty lover and uh, wants more freedom, particularly homeschoolers and homeschool families. We want more individual freedom and we want more control over our individual lives. And I, uh, I teach my fellow libertarians how to push ideas like that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The, the homeschool crowd is definitely one that, you know, it's, it's there, right? Like you're already, you've already made the decision that like, you want to have that responsibility for your, your children, you know, like you're not comfortable pushing that off onto the state. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's there, you know, and, and I think it's yeah, there for, for sure. most people. It's there. It's certainly there. It's, it's, it's closer to the surface with homeschoolers and homesteaders. I've noticed very close to the surface that, that love for individual liberty and, and, you know, control over their, their lives. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it, it took me a while to, to figure out what it was, but I mean, like, like you said, it, it's always there. It's like right on bubbling up on the top. You just didn't know what it was, uh, what it was called or, or what it was, who else was there? You know, you're the only one out there that believes these things. Right. So, <laughs> all right, man. All right. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'll, I'll let you go. Um, anything you want to, any, any last words of advice for, for people thinking about deciding to, to homeschool? Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> There's, <clears throat> it, 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 I had it not been for that issue with my, uh, with my nine year old, um, what, seven at the time, but it had it not been an issue with her, I wouldn't have done it. We, it would have been one of those things that we talked about and we thought about, and it, it would have seemed overwhelming and, and like it was too much. And uh, I would have been totally wrong and my kids would have absolutely missed out and my family would have missed out all because I was too much of a sissy to do it. So yeah, my, my advice would be to uh, hitch up your britches and get it done because you'll be better for it. And so will your kids. Truth, truth in that. All right. And uh, any, any place we can send people to, to, I don't know, find out about your, your boat tour or anything else you you want to direct people to? Uh, I don't have a page up for it yet, but uh, you can follow me on Facebook. Uh, you can send me a friend request. I love to talk about anything from politics to philosophy to <laughs> to uh, homesteading and homeschooling, particularly homesteading and homeschooling. Brent DeRitter, you'll find me on Facebook. I think I'm the only one. It's a terrible last name. Most people drop it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I'll have a page up for the... Um, and a YouTube channel up for the, uh, the boat and, um, our, you know, the, our, our lifestyle and our travels. All right. That, that's, I will, uh, I'll, I'll post your, your Brent DeRitter Facebook link in the, in the show notes. And then as, as, uh, as things come about, I'll, I'll try to update them and remind people on the, the podcast. Cause that, I, I imagine that will be quite a fun YouTube to watch. Um, get to see all those places i never never would see yeah not a, right not a boat on, guy man. myself but all right well <laughs> get yourself a bus <laughs> man <laughs> i you know i i i always wanted a bus i've always wanted a bus but uh i'm stuck with a min minivan for now 
<laughs> Inbox me. I'll, I'll help you make it happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to convince the, the wife and everybody else that it's a good idea. You know? but... Yeah, you're on your own there. Do you love freedom? Do you love songs? Do you want to love all 365 days in a year? If you're anything like me, the simple answer is yes. And Freedom Song 365 can deliver all of these things. When you sign up for Freedom Song 365, you will receive an email every day that delves into the different ways freedom and liberty are messaged in a massive catalog of music. Each message is carefully crafted into easily consumable paragraphs that give you the necessary information to share with your friends. I've been receiving Freedom Song 365 emails every day of 2019, and I've yet to be disappointed. But really, why should I be? With the fabulous minds of Nikki P. from the Sounds Like Liberty podcast, my guest from episode 4, Sherry Voluntary, and the wonderful Luke Tatum of the Culture of Peace podcast, there's more brain power utilized in the creation of each individual Freedom Song 365 email than is proffered in a whole day at any DMV across the country. Head on over to freedomsong365.com and sign up today to start receiving your daily emails of musical integrity. Use the promo code HOMESTEAD and you'll receive 15% off the superb service. Again, that's freedomsong365.com, promo code HOMESTEAD for 15% off. Can you believe that? It almost would be unbelievable that, that you would have a problem with a child excelling. Except that uh, I, I know how the public school system works. And it's it's not surprising, unfortunately. Sadly, it is not surprising. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, if you are a, a boat person, if you're uh, in the area of the Great Loop, you know, pay attention to Brent. See what he's, see what he's doing. Check it out. I'm sure he, he has some valuable knowledge that he would share um, in some of, his, some of his speeches, some of his talks. Um, I'm going to make this quick because I am running out of space in the Libsyn, um, because I gave you that Thursday update. Anyway, I'm going to keep it up. So if you want to support the show, uh, go to homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash Amazon, click through the, the link there, go leave a review on the, uh, the old Apple iTunes there or, or Stitcher or Overcast or whatever, whatever the heck it is that, uh, you use to, to listen to pods. Um, go leave a review there. And of course you can always, uh, Go to patreon.com slash the Liberty Hippie for um, extra extra goodies, some some bonus material, and uh, and the like. And I, I think that is all for today. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me for for another week. Hope you come back next week. Get out there, sow those seeds of liberty. We can all reap sheaves of freedom together. Don't write us his dreams.